All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Tech Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us. We are broadcasting live from Rodigio in Henderson. Come check us out. We're at the Galleria Mall here. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Great drink specials, free appetizers. Come by. Uh, the only penalty that you'll have to pay is you'll be forced to shake my hand and say hello to me. That's all you have to do, but come by and say hello. Uh, coming up here in just a few minutes is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have an all-out Duke debate here live on the air with a couple listeners and Chris Wynn. We've got Ron Futrell from Channel 8 coming up here in hour number two, Mike Babcock from TMZ Sports, and John Brukhagen coming up here in just a few minutes from Infinity, the Math Institute, So, uh, and Steve Sear, super host. Wow, we have a lot to get to here in the next yes. 90 minutes or so. And that, of course, is the voice of Chris Wynn. Uh, I want to do get, get to a caller here real quick that's been waiting patiently on hold. As you know, you will not find a more interactive show than the Vegas Take. We try to get to every call we can. And let's go to Dean. Dean, thanks for waiting patiently on hold. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Brian. I just can't let you know I'm calling from the Bronx, New York. I'm not in Vegas, by the way. Wow, so you so, are streaming live on KDWN.com. Is that correct? Okay, um, I know it's Vegas, Kate, but I hope you don't mind hearing from somebody in the Bronx, New York. I, I love the fact that you are listening to our show across the country, my friend. Thank you so much. So what do you think about this issue? It's a great show. I was um, listening you. to you talking about building the wall and the people yes, who sir. overstay their visa. And I think um, you know about the Homeland Security Program, E-Verify. I sure. just think that could... Um, that program, it's, I don't know if it's actually a federal law, but it was put in mm -hmm. place some years ago. Yes. And um, yes. some, I think it's a voluntary thing that some states cooperate and some don't. And I think like New York, my home state, and California, yeah. they're, they're, they're not really Dean. cooperating. So that could probably help. Cause Dean, let me ask you, Dean, where are you from? They, they, they have to find work somewhere. No. Dean, 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 hold on. It's more stricter in Canada, but then again, Canada is about... Okay, Dean, I, I have to... The population Dean, have to... of the United States, so... Um, Dean, can you hear me? I think that Dean, could, Dean, hello? Um, hello? Dean? Could, um, er, Dean, Dean, okay, we got to let Dean go because Dean isn't stopping... Okay, I'm sorry, Dean. We got to let you. I was going to ask Dean where you're from, and I wanted to get into a conversation, but that was not really much of a conversation. That was kind of a one-way conversation. That was like somebody staring mm -hmm. at his window and having a star, staring at, I, I guess, at his mirror and having a long conversation. But listen, I appreciate you listening from New York, Dean. But when you call into a show, there is a host. There's something called a host, and, and usually the host will will interject at some point. I can't let you talk for 15 minutes. But thank you for the call. I appreciate it anyway. All right, so this is going to be a lot of fun here. I, I, I think I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, this is going to be a lot. So as you know, Chris Wynn, he does lean a little bit to the left. And we have yeah. very loyal listeners, which we appreciate very much. Some of them have decided to stop by, which we appreciate. So we got two guys sitting at the table now, sitting across from Chris Wynn. Yeah. It's Brian and J.D. Now, not J.D. Sharp, my co-host, J.D. Caller and Brian Caller. These mm -hmm. are two loyal listeners. They are Republicans. They, well, they might not say they're Republicans, but they are. They both support Donald Trump. And Chris Wynn, not much of a Trump supporter. So first of all, Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Brian, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yes. Uh, appreciate the time. So, as you know, this is the legend himself, Chris Wynn. You guys have gotten into it with him before. Chris seems to think that Joe Biden is going to beat Donald Trump. What do you say to that? He'll be lucky to be able to cross the finish line. In fact, J.D., why don't you tell him what your prediction is? Uh, about two weeks after he rolled out with his energy and already his gaffes, I predicted that by July 4th, He'll be checked into a hospital for fatigue. Actually, it's going to be a mental hospital, and uh, that will be the end of his career. Uh, he would be 79 years old come Election Day. The man cannot uh, chew gum and walk at the same Chris? time. Chris? Okay, let Chris respond. Go ahead. Well, uh, look, his age is documented. We understand that. But uh, also, you got to look at the individual, right? And Joe Biden is a guy who has been en as energetic as any 40, 50, or 60-year-old in the past, you know, 10 to 15 years in politics. He also was, uh, you know, of course, was the vice president for Barack Obama for eight years. Uh, had a long career in politics before that, obviously, as a senator from Delaware. Uh, look, if you want to talk about people who are, yes, there are some people running for president who are in their 70s, okay? We get that, okay? The, but the, the assumption is not... First, let me put this in a sports perspective, okay? When you go into any season, whether it be a basketball season, football season, baseball season, you don't just go under the assumption that someone's going to get injured, right? You don't go under the assumption that some player is not going to be available, okay? And that's the way I look at this. Now, you know, to me, it's going to be more about the dynamics of this 
campaign. And I wanted to talk to you guys about this because away we go here, right? On Wednesday, Donald Trump, of course, launched his campaign for 2020 in Orlando, Florida at the Amway Center in front of thousands of people, thousands of Trump supporters. And, you know, we heard a lot of the same hits that we heard in 2016. You know, uh, a lot of the, the, people, the supporters there were chanting lock her up and he was talking about what his plans were. I was curious from you, Brian and J.D., what you guys think is going to be different with respect to Donald Trump as we go into 2020 as opposed to 2016. Because there's a lot of stuff that he said on Wednesday night that sounded very similar to the, to the previous election in 2016. J.D.'s trying to cut you off, uh, Chris. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> with Donald Trump, I don't, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of difference. Even with his slogans and everything else, he has the enthusiasm. 100,000 people wanted tickets to that event the other night when he announced his, his campaign coming out. A week ago, well, last Saturday, there was supposed to be a national outpouring of people put out by moveon.org across the country called Impeach Trump Now. It was supposed to be in cities all across the country. What happened? Nobody showed up. There were 20, 30 people in some cities, maybe 200 in some of the larger cities. It was not even a blip on the radar. You had 100,000 people apply for tickets to see Donald Trump last week. He has enthusiasm to draw crowds like nobody Did on the other side. Did you say the same thing about Barack Obama? Because he drew some pretty large crowds as well. Would you more say so. he had enthusiasm? More, more so. Yes. He drew very big crowds. Okay, so we he did. I don't disagree with you. Uh, Donald no, Trump I, draws I think huge he's crowds. Question: He has charisma. And he's a guy who's 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 energetic, and he and he does, yes. But l make no mistake about it. It's not as if he's expanded his base. What an iota. How do you know that? I, because it, it, has, has there any, been any indication in any type of media, whether it be CNN, MSNBC, <laughs> NBC, CBS, ABC, and uh, Fox News, where, they come, where there's, people are coming out and saying, you know what? There's a lot more people in America that are supporting Donald Trump we're, now than were in 2016. You don't, you don't hear it at all. It's, no, not, it's, not, it's not something that is even talked about no, whatsoever. Well, nobody's, nobody's asking everybody in the country, uh, have you changed your mind? Are you going to support uh, No, you're making Trump? observations, J.D., about, about what his base is and does he expand his base. It's That's too what early. the observation well, is. The polls are, are too early. Uh, in, re in regard to your sports analogy yeah. about Biden, yes, there's it's 100% no, correct. There's no designated hitters running for the presidency of the United States. <laughs> Well, that's neither here nor there, though. What's, I mean, I, I understand what designated hitters bring to the table in baseball, but I, I'm talking about Joe Biden as a viable, you know, physical human being. Okay? Can I just say one People thing about think, crowds? He's, he's, first of all, he's, he's, he has 35 percent, right? Of the Democratic, uh, Chris of the is Democratic, heated up. Hey, Democratic Chris, base right now. Chris, do Chris. those people think that he's going to die Chris. like the day after he gets inaugurated? That's I what guarantee they said about John McCain. You, I guarantee you, if Bernie Sanders is the candidate for the Democrat Party. Trump's base will multiply by leaps and bounds. Can I say As one thing about crowds, though, real quick? And then I want you, first of all, in regards to big crowds, yes, you're right. Donald Trump gets big crowds. If Kim Kardashian ran for president, exactly. she would also get big crowds. Yeah, we like we, if, if the nitwit Paris Hilton ran for president, she would probably, well, maybe not as much as Kim Kardashian. If Kanye West, the mental patient, ran yep. for president, he would also get big crowds. You would, you would agree, right? People like to no, see train not wrecks. Like the crowds people, you know, see here. You you're telling been, me if Kim Kardashian ran for rally? You're, yes, I have, actually. Okay. I've been to several of them the in The ones Vegas. here? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm telling, uh, I went to the one at in Westgate. In lines for six or seven hours to get well, in? Well, I'm a member of the media. I would never right. wait to see that idiot right. talk. And just the congeniality of the people that I are wouldn't in wait line. five minutes to see that moron talk because he reads that stupid teleprompter and all he does is insult the media. He insults women. He insults POWs. I would not pay one dollar or wait one minute to see that idiot. The only reason why I went to those because I had to because it was my job. Seems that like, is the truth. It seems like the president has a way with words. Well, and just because he has yeah, people that want to show up. At, look, That's what he does. And by the way, Brian, you brought up the numbers. Uh, <laughs> your numbers are a little bit off, okay? 100,000 people, that's not exactly accurate. The Amway Center holds, I believe, 22,000 with the extra seating. 100,000 people requested tickets. Well, right. Well, okay, so so where, where were those people? Those people weren't outside the Amway Arena tailgating. They, there they, was people outside the Amway Arena, right? They had, and then once, they had once the big events, screens. Yeah, once the event started, right, the people went in there. And there was, by the way, there was about three to 4,000 empty seats in the upper bowl of the Amway Center when that, that actual rally took place. And when you looked outside, how many people were out there? There was nobody outside. So, look, I get it. If, you, if there were 100,000 people, I, I guess 80,000 aren't going to go down there if they can't get into the how arena. Ma how, how, many but, went, how many went to meet Biden on his rollout? Well, he hasn't necessarily. I mean, I, there, I, I, 
off the top of my head, I don't remember what exactly. Uh, I think, his, I think his, they said his, there was uh, 200 people. The capacity or what 200, the was 200 firemen, I believe, were. Uh, Christian Gillibrand, I think she's reintroduced her campaign three times. Uh, nobody comes. Uh, you know, you had a, an enormous amount of people. I still say anything we are looking at now, whether it's polls or crowd sizes or what have you, is just 17 months out. Uh, I agree too, with you, J.D. Too many things. I agree with you. Too polls many, don't mean anything right now. We're not even talking about one of the most important issues probably in his presidency, and that's the uh, Iran situation. Listen, well, uh, well, hold on, hold on. You, 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 you just said, po you you said polls. Thing. Well, hold on. I'll address the polls thing. You yeah. just said polls don't mean anything. Don't tell that to a stripper in Las Vegas. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but, you, but, but you're right. I agree with you. The polls don't mean anything yeah. right now. But, but Trump wants to, he wants to have his cake and eat it, too. He wants Here. to say, you know what, the polls don't mean anything. But uh, well, when based, polls, on his, based on his when weight, I would agree with you. When good things about me or when, or when they have me, you know, in, in a good spot, then he'll, he'll, pull, he'll, he'll roll those things out there like it's the second coming. And right? here's so. another advantage Mr. Trump's going to have, okay? He's You've, incumbent. Whether it's Joe Biden or anybody else who gets that Democratic nomination, they're going to get attacked by the other 19 people and Trump at the same time. So they're getting... Joe Biden is getting it from all sides. Brian, you're right. It's a, it's, that's the issue that took place yesterday, of course, with the words that Joe Biden used. And I know, J.D., you want to weigh in on this about, the, about what Joe Biden said yesterday. And that's an issue that, that former President Barack Obama brought up. He said, look, we don't want a circular firing squad, okay? We don't want, you know, there's, I mean, I, we understand there's 20-something people that are running for president in the Democratic Party. Now, look. 15 of those people have less than 1%, right, or between 1% and 2% of, of the support. But the point well, being me, is that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to end up coming down to, like, the top three. Well, let me say this first of all. This is a okay. good-spirited debate. I always okay. like it when you guys call in and, and, and not only go at it with me, but go at it with Chris, too, because I think, number one, it's good radio and it's fun. And number two, I like to hear a different perspective, and I think we need more of these debates. I want to thank both of you gentlemen for coming here, for supporting the show, for always calling in. I'll always take your calls. Go ahead. Could I go say ahead. one thing yes. in regard to the dem 240 Democrats, and I think, I think uh, 241, right? <laughs> 241, and I think Mr. Shapiro will in, will appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Of all the Democrats running, I said this about Obama in 2008. I said I don't think he will win in 2008, but he will be president mm -hmm. in eight or 12 years. I am going to say that this mayor from South Bend, absolutely, Pete, Peter Buttigieg who is 37 years old, yes. is the smartest guy of all the Democrats. Well, you've heard me say that I support him. He, may, like not, him. he, he yeah. may not get to the finish. He definitely won't get to the finish line. But in eight years, like Obama, the country changed, the demographics changed, and Obama had yes. a chance to win. And in eight more years, uh, LBGTQ, all the uh, stuff of the, mm. that's out there, this kid will be president in eight or, eight or 12 years. I agree. Gentlemen, thank you so right. much for being here. Thanks for having us. I really appreciate yeah, thank that. Thank you very much. Stick Thanks around. Thanks for the Rodizio Grill. St yes, stick around. We'll, we'll hang out afterwards. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, um, and uh, uh, right now, right now, I want to introduce. Really? No. <laughs> Trump kicked their ass. Right, <laughs> uh, right, He's five right now, JD is in Chris Wood's face, uh, <laughs> continuing ISIS, the debate. But I want to. is wiped out around the nation, hey, I wanna, around the world. I want to invite uh, this guy onto the show right now. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, JD and Brian, for, for being a part of it. Uh, the guy joining us right now who is here at Rodigio Grill, we, we appreciate him supporting the show, as he always has. It would be John Brukagan with Infinity, the Math Institute. Uh, and for those of you quickly who don't know what Infinity, the Math Institute is, I want to give you the opportunity to explain what it is. Go for it. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here. This uh, live event is great. The crowd is great. Everybody's really enthused. And uh, I hope you guys do more of these live spots because... It's uh, really creating a lot of excitement yep. here in Henderson, and we do this all over Vegas. Uh, really quick, for those uh, who haven't heard me on your show before, mm -hmm. I uh, have Infinity, the Math Institute, on the corner of Flamingo and Torrey Pines. And um, <clears throat> we're a math tutoring firm, but we're so much more. We're an after-school uh, program that creates a community of students who want to succeed in school. and. You know, with all these uh, politics that you guys have been talking about and the slogan, Make America Great Again, you know, I don't care if you're on the left or right. We all agree that the education system has to improve and our kids really need to start taking school more seriously, start learning more. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, kids in other countries like India, China, uh, on and on. Can I just interject about the... The slogan, Make America Great Again, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I was going to wear my shirt, Make America Nasty Again, 
I thought twice about it. I went to the AVN Awards, uh, the, the AVN Expo. Boy, what a transition. He's talking about education, and then I bring up the <laughs> porn awards. That's wonderful. No, but I went with Chris, and I wore the shirt, Make America Nasty Again, and it was very popular. I'm sorry. I just no, I felt no, like, it's all right. My I felt wife. Like, I felt like I needed to interject on that. I'm my sorry. My wife, for our anniversary, her number one present request is to get a red hat with white letters that said, Made You Look. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's our... Uh, well, I make my I make my Amer I make America nasty again shirt, and I get that half a second look, and then the laugh, and it, it, it's just hilarious when you see the looks on people's faces. <laughs> I bought a pen, a Donald Trump pen, that it looks like a Pez machine, and you press a button, and it throws a punch, and he says like eight or nine things. And he says something. Yeah, that, one oh. of them is uh, rem always remember Seven Eleven, you know, instead of Nine Eleven, and it's, it's just really funny. That's all. <laughs> That's all. You know, <laughs> and the, the thing that I find funniest, because I, I try not to get too political on your mm -hmm. show. But let me tell you something. If we weren't so divided, Saturday Night Live, comedians, mm -hmm. we could have so much fun with Donald Trump. I mean, he's a, he was great to me. You know, if, if people didn't so sincerely hate him so much, we could just do satire on him. And he's a funny dude. I mean, you know, whether you like him or we don't like him. We like Infinity Math. It's, it's a right. great thing. Right. Well, great it's awesome. people. But, it's but awesome. you have to admit, though, given the dynamic and the way this country is right now, Saturday Night Live just has all kinds of ammunition. Brian talks about all the time about this show is like, look, you know, if Donald Trump wasn't president, look, in our opinion, there would be uh, a lot a lot better things out there that we'd be talking about. But the fact of the matter is, is that the guy is intriguing. You know, he, he, he is someone who spurs topics. Right. And that's what Saturday Night Live is all about. Right. But I, I want it to be more satirical and less mm -hmm. hate based. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, I don't want to talk about which side I lie on because I'm your educational consultant. I'm not your political consultant. But I didn't like when the right was disrespecting Obama. And I don't like when the left is disrespecting yeah. Trump. If you disagree, that's one thing, you know, and if you have something to say about it. But, you know, to, to be so hateful and spiteful just because you hate Obama or because you hate Trump. Right. You know, I, I just feel like it doesn't, it's not constructive. It doesn't help anyone. I'll tell you what would have been constructive for me if I had an educational consultant when I was very young. I still need one now. I have about third grade grammar. I don't know how to subtract, multiply, or divide. Uh, I would imagine many of the students that are at your school would destroy me when it comes to math. Well, speaking of destroying yeah. you when it comes to math, the number one reason I wanted to come on today is to plug next Friday's show. Okay, I want to do it Thursday. Can we do it Thursday instead of Friday? You're killing me. Yeah, I might have to do it Thursday. I forgot to discuss that with you. Let's discuss it. Let's, Let's discuss, discuss it, it on the air. All we right. usually yeah. do this yes. behind the scenes. Yes. But, can I, but can I pose a question to you? You brought up education, of course, in Nevada, and I think it's fair to say that it's a challenge right now in this state. When it comes to education, particularly, you for, act like this is news, younger, but it's okay. not news. It's not news whatsoever. But the, my question to you is this: What does Affinity, the Math Institute, what do they bring to the table that's going to uh, make an improvement and make a dent when it comes to you know dealing with that uh, that that separation of uh, you know a, a very a very uh, challenged educational system here in Nevada. All right, number one, you guys got to see some of the testimonials, mm -hmm. whether it's on our Facebook page or at themathinstitute.com. Yeah. The kids are making transformations, yep. and we are teaching them how to do math. But that goes without saying. The thing we're doing to change the educational system is surrounding these kids with other kids who value their education. Too many kids are worried about what the cool kid in class thinks, and usually the more you disrespect the teacher, the lower you wear your pants. You know, it, you know, and then it's, um, it's contagious. I want to say that you gave away uh, to your summer camp here at Infinity to Math Institute, you, you gave away a prize to one of our listeners. His name is Chuck. He called in yesterday, and he, he, he said how much fun his son had going to your school. He actually called in and, and, and was saying that great things. That is awesome. Things. Yeah, so that's cool. And you're I doing want, some, you're doing I want some good things. I want the listeners, I want you guys, I want everybody yeah. to hear the testimonials yeah. from the parents, how they sent their kid there as punishment, mm -hmm. and a week later that kid can't wait to go there. And next thing you know, right. all they want to do is be there. And it's a, it's crazy because people hear, oh, the Math Institute, I got to go there, da 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 But we make it fun. We create a community of kids that like each other, that have fun with each other, and they're hanging around doing their thing, you know, really enjoying becoming smarter. Give out the information. We only got a minute. All right. How do people contact Please. you? Give us a call at 702-768-1777 mm -hmm. or visit themathinstitute.com or Google us. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. You can find the testimonials. The best thing you could do is find out what mm -hmm. the other customers say. Of course, mm -hmm. I love it. Cool. And the last thing I want to say 
is that next week we're going to have a trivia yes. contest. I'm going to bring in a couple of kids For an hour. to play you yes. and the Sharp in a little trivia game. We're going to have some fun. And we are going to yes. have a lot of fun. And I will, I will promote it next week. We will pick a day next week to do it. Awesome. John Brickhagen from to Infinity it. the Math Institute. Thank you so much for taking some no, time to join us. No, thank you for us. having me and great, you great bet. event you guys are Thank having you here. so much. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Superhost, one of the world's most famous casino host, Steve Sear. Coming up next, you're listening to The Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDOM.